Good evening, a Gemar Tov, a good quintal to each and every one of you. I hope your fast went well. And last night we began the cycle, as I mentioned to you, the four days before Sukkot, between Yom Kippur and Sukkot, there's four days, Kenega the Yud uh, of the Shemavaya and the K and the Vav and the K, Yud K, Vav K, the four days. But the night of Motsoy Yom Kippur is connected the Kutza show you that thorn on the top of the Yud, which is like a Madrega higher than even the Oilam Atzilos. It's the Oilam of Keser. And that's the reason that Shlomo HaMelech said to everyone after Yom Kippur to go home and to feast and to be merry and to be happy. And I hope that each and every one of you had a sauda with candles lit, with washing on challah and having zmiris and divrei Torah as part of the sauda last night. Now we know that the Gemara says that ulakachnam lachem bayom arishon. You take on the first day the lul of the esrig. Um, and the Gemara asked, that's Yom HaRishon, that's not the first, it's the 15th day. It's the first day of Sukkot, the 15th day of Tishrei. So the Gemara answers that it's the first accounting, it's the beginning of the reckoning and keeping a cheshben of all of the Averis that you didn't do. So the obvious question, <clears throat> and I've mentioned this to you, is there's no Yid doing any Avera for the four days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot, that the Gemara should say that the Cheshben for Avoinus begins on Sukkot, and that's the reason that it's called Yom Arishan, because it's the beginning, the first of the accounting. But they say that Kadmonim bring that we are at such a high after Yom Kippur, it's like you were in a building with 200 stories, floors, and you went up to the top and you got out and you're in the realm of heaven. That is how we come out, Motso Yom Kippur. We were malochim, we were like angel, like the entire day, dressed in white, white yarmulkes, white kitlach, white uh, shoes many people wear. The idea of white, of pure, of purity, that we come out at such a level we didn't eat, we didn't uh, drink, we didn't do anything on the day that would reflect physicality, that materialistic living. We were living like angels. So coming out at that level with the slightest effort, you could stay naki michet. You can be clean and cleansed completely, completely of any type of chet. And sukkahs, it's a new hashpa, and that's when the cheshman begins, so says the Gemara. We know that on sukkahs, the Ushpizen visit, and many tzaddikim, who were able to set the table in their sukkah, they always put out chairs for the Ushpizen. Because like the Baal Shem Tev, if you were able to see the Ushpizen, you saw Avram Avinu coming. And that's why it's important to have a guest. Because if Avram Avinu comes into as the Ushpiz in the first night of Sukkot and there's no guest, some say he turns around and walks out. Because how could there be an Yom Tiv that we don't have a guest inside of our Sukkot to accommodate, to treat royally, to f- have him feast and enjoy the Yom Tiv. But those same Kadmonim say, that, <clears throat> excuse me, the same Kadmonim say that Avira de Eretz Yisrael is in the Sukkah. The atmosphere and the air 
of Eretz Yisrael is in each and every sukkah. How do they prove their point and marshal support to this statement that there's in every sukkah avira de Eretz Yisrael? So the answer is because Yitzchak Avinu was told never to leave Eretz Yisrael. And he didn't step out of Eretz Yisrael his entire 180 years that he lived. Now, if we're inviting him into the sukkah as one of the Ushpizen, and he's not allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael, how could he be leaving Eretz Yisrael to come into our sukkahs? But the answer, they say, is that there is indeed a vira de Eretz Yisrael in every sukkah, so that Yitzchak Avinu <coughs> Excuse me. Can come join us the second night as one of the Ushpizen, because he was not allowed to leave Eretz Yisrael. So we have to have the heir of Eretz Yisrael in every sukkah so that he could come in as one of the Ushpizen. So it shows you the level of the Kedusha of a sukkah and everything that is encompassed within the realm of the very few things that the entire body is drenched with, like going into a mikveh or stepping foot in Eretz Yisrael that every Dalet Amis is a schus and a mitzvah to walk there, to be there. And the sukkah, we walk in with our entire body and we're inside of the sukkah. Now, we know that Yaakov of Venus Yortzite and the Bnei Susser talks two pages about this. We know though that Yaakov of Venus Yortzite is the first day of Sukkot. And interestingly, when he was Nifter, it says that his children, his family, had Avelis for 70 days. And then they took him to bury him. In Halacha, we find no mention of a 70-day period. The entire time that people lo aleinu lo aleichem are Avelim, the first seven days there's Shiva, then there's an Indian of Shloishim, and then there's Shana for a mother or father, Lo Alem Lo Aleichem, who dies, who's Nifter and departs. We have a year of Avelos that a person can't go to weddings, and there's many things that he can't do because he's in the year of Avelos. So, why in Parshas Vayechi, the last sedra of Sefer Bereshis, where the story of Yaakov Avinu's departing, why in the world did the children, the Shivtei Ka, have a 70-day period, and then they took him and buried him in Hebron? So as the Bnei Sashar elaborates and says, because Yaakov Avinu, more than any of the Avos, <clears throat> because let's not forget that Avram Avinu wanted to have the Shiv off, and he couldn't because he had a son, Yishmael. Yitzchak wanted, and even though he was an oil of Tamima, he was the only one of the three Avos who never stepped foot out of Eretz Israel. He couldn't have the Yud Bey Shvatan, because he had an ace of. But Yaakov Avinu, as the Gemara calls him, the Bechir Sheba Avos, the most choice, and he's the one that had, indeed, the twelve, the Yud Bey Shvatim. And Yaakov Avinu felt the responsibility to pull his children and grandchildren, everyone out of the Golas. That's why many types, see, when we 
translate in a classroom to children, Parshas Vayechi, and we say the Rashi that Yaakov Avinu desperately wanted to be Megala. He wanted to bring about the Kate's Hayomim. We tell the children that he wanted to tell them when it was going to be. It was going to be. But we do not say to them that he wanted to be Megala the Kates. That means to actually bring Mashiach right then and there. The Geula Shlema. But that's how many touch that Rashi. Bikesh Yaakov Legalos as Hakates doesn't just mean to say to his children, well, this is how many years you're going to suffer and have to be around before there will be a Geula Shlema. He wanted Bikesh Yaakov Legalos as Hakates. He wanted to reveal the actual Kates Hayomim and to be able to tell the children when it was going to come. And that's when this Talak Mimenu Hashchina, that the Ruach HaKodesh and the Koyach of Nevua left him. And he couldn't tell them because he couldn't see anymore. They didn't want him to say anything about it in Shamayim. Now, Hanukkah is the last Yom Tov that is a national, that's a Klal Yisrael Yom Tov. Purim took place around 260 years before the story of Hanukkah. So the last Yom Tov that we say a full Hallel all eight days, we don't skip like we do on Rosh Chodesh or on Cholomoy Pesach, that we skip some of the paragraphs, two paragraphs, but we say the entire Hallel on Hanukkah. Yaakov Avinu saw that Hanukkah is going to be the send-off for Klal Yisrael until Mashiach would come. And that they're going to have to have enough baggage, valises, suitcases of Inyonim to hold them up, a crane to hold them up with their emuna for the 2,000 years that they would be suffering and that they would, be, that they would have such difficulties in, of expulsions, of, of mass murder, of everything that would happen to Klal Yisrael. So he wanted to bring the Kates, Hayam and Bikesh Yaakov, Legalos es Hakates. But they didn't let him. Now, if you take from the first day of Sukkot, which is, as I've said, the yard side of Yaakov Avinu, the yard side of Yaakov Avinu, and you count 70 days, it comes out exactly the first day of Hanukkah. Because the first day of Sukkot is Tes Vav Tishrei. And if you go to 30 days later, Tes Vav Cheshven. Then 30 days later to Tes Vav Kislev, that's 60. And then 10 days more from Tes Vav Kislev to Chof Kislev, that's 10. More makes it exactly 70. And Yaakov Avinu wanted to be holding on to the Shaykhis to Hanukkah so that he should help in the send off from Hanukkah, which Klal Yisrael would have been their last main yumtiv to hold on to, till Mashiach would come, that he should be able to have a Shaykhis and a connection. So that's why they ended the Avelas exactly 70 days after the first day of Sukkot, the yard site of Yaakov Avinu. Now, we know that after Klal Yisrael, because 
they did the chet ego that Mashiach did not come, and that they had to go to Golis Mitzrayim, and then Golis Yavon, and Modai, and, and Edom, the four Golison. So Yaakov Avinu took on his shoulders, as he was living, Sorim say, he took on his shoulders that he would live through a lot of tsaris to make easier the tsaris of Klal Yisrael when they would be going through the four Golison. And that's why he had exactly four major stories in his life, Yaakov Avinu. He suffered with Lovan for 20, over 20 years. He suffered with Dina, with the story of Shechem. He suffered with Esav, his, his brother. And he suffered with the story of Yosef at Sadek and sat in Avelis for 22 years crying, lost his Ruach HaKodesh. And these four happenings, which basically comprised of his whole life, these four happenings were to ease the pain as bad as the Golison were, it would have been much worse. He took on his shoulders to suffer through these occurrences to be able to relieve Klal Yisrael from the level of what it could have been, these four Golison. And that's why he wanted to attach himself to Hanukkah because Hanukkah would be the send-off for Klal Yisrael. And that's why they had only 70 days of Avelis, which they were, of course, they kept the whole Torah, so they were Mashlam every day. But why did they change and they didn't stay in their, their sackcloth or in their Avelis? beyond 70 days. And so says the Bnei Yisoschar. Now, we, we know that we know that Yaakov Avinu, the Tur Shulchan Aruch says, you know, the Tur who lived 700 years ago, 750, was the son of the Rosh. And he's the Balaturim in Chumash. Now, the, the Tur Shulchan Aruch says that every Yom Tiv corresponds to a different one of the others. That Avram Avinu is corresponds to Pesach because when he said Vasi Ugos that Rashi says it means baked matzah because it was Pesach so there's some remez to the connection of Avram to Pesach Yitzchak Avinu the shoifer of the Akeda was the same shoifer that was sounded by Har Sinai so he has a sheikh to Shavuos Har Sinai by Matan Torah but Yaakov Avinu, interestingly, <clears throat> is, says the Torah, is Sukkot. And why is it Sukkot? Because it says, Ula Mikneu Asa Sukkos, that when he was traveling back to Eretz Yisrael after the encounter with Esav, that he, the Pasuk says that for his cattle he made huts. Now, Avram Avinu with Pesach, it's a good raya, and Yitzchak, a lofty, special, auspicious occasion of Akeda and of everything that went around Matan Torah. But because Yaakov Avinu built huts for the cattle, does that mean that he deserves to be the essence of Sukkot, such a great yomtiv like Sukkot. So the Mepharshim say <clears throat> he deserves Sukkot because he displayed, like the, the Targum, Yonason Ben Uziel says, that when he got 
that to the place that they ended up calling Sukkot, the first thing he did was he made a base of Medrash. It says that he made a bias, Ula Mikneu, and to his flock of cattle, he made a sukkah. And then Mephorsh would say he was the first one to protect animals from the sun and from the rain. He built huts for them. But the Mephorsh would really say that that is not what they have in mind. That when it comes to the bias, which represents permanency, he made a bias of Besamedrish, like the Targum Yonis and ben says. But for the Gashmias, the cattle, the Gashmias and all the materialistic, also Sukos, he made little huts that was very inferior to the bias, the Besamedrish that he made. But that is the Pusik that the Medrash says that associates Yaakov Avinu with Sukkot. And there is a question that's asked, the Tur asks this question, why is it that Sukkot is after Yom Kippur? Why not after Pesach? When they left Egypt, they left the Mitzrayim, they were in the huts. They were in the Sukkot, so we should have Sukkot, the Yom Tov Sukkot, right after Pesach. So he answers and says, because then the world would say that, oh, they're not doing mitzvahs, they're doing it for their own comfort. That's after Pesach, it starts getting warm and not so comfortable, and it's nice to be outside. So that's why they're building these huts. But no one could say it after Yom Kippur, where many places after Yom Kippur, we had also a couple very cold days that could, uh, and we sit in the sukkah sometimes with our coats. No one could say we're doing it to sit in beautiful weather because the weather isn't so beautiful always. We hope, as is Hashem, that this year there will be beautiful weather for all of the Yidden. And you didn't deserve it for all the chesed, for all the Torah that's learned, and for all the mitzvahs and mitzvahs and tovim that take place with Yidin as they go through the year, and they come to a Rosh Hashanah, then Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur clean, and they go into a, a year, because the Mishnah says that if it comes Sukkot, and it rains, that the Mishnah says it's a comparable to a king who asked his servant to pour him a cup of wine, and then when he finishes, the king takes the cup of wine and throws it in the face of the uh, the Mishnah says this. And that's what it's like if it ends up raining. That a God who says, eh, you're avoiding, you're this, you're that. Because the sukkah is the receptacle of all that avoid of El Rosh Hashanah, Aser Tshuva, and, and Yom Kippur, that all of that avoid that comes out to flourish on sukkahs. What's flourishing? That we can go into the sukkah and we can make a bracha and we can say divrei Torah and we come in, the schach is like the shechina. And the Shechina has the power to be able to be Mashpia and those who paskin, that you don't sleep in a sukkah. I mean, the Shulchan Aruch says you're supposed to sleep in the sukkah because you're supposed to be Kain Teshu, Kain Taduru. You're supposed to be in the sukkah like you're living your life, like you sleep in a bedroom, you eat on a table, you have your whole cycle of the hours and the days of sukkahs reflected in the fact that you eat there and sleep there. But some said that there's such holiness with the Shekhinah, with the Schach, that if a person has a bad dream when he sleeps, an improper dream, that it's an insult to the Schach. You're in the middle of talking to somebody, to the, uh, to, to the biggest tzaddik in the world, and you're right in the middle, you were granted an audience, and your cell phone goes off and you say, uh, well, I have to answer the cell phone in the middle. That's like going into a sukkah 
and having bad thoughts and dreams. So they said, better than taking that chance, better not to sleep in the sun. There was some tzaddikim of 200 years ago and 250 years ago who held like that. Uh, and that's why in Chabad they don't sleep in the sukkah. But most of the world does, because the Shulchan Aruch says you're supposed to sleep in the thing. But the chashash, the concern for the kedusha of the schach, which has the shechina on it, we don't do it. Now as to our question, why sukkah comes out after Yom Kippur and not after Pesach, The answer is because the whole tafket of the avoida of all these 54 days from Rosh Chodesh El through Simcha's Torah is to transform all the averas into mitzvahs. And we know that all this firm write about it that Rosh Hashanah is a midas hadin. We're being judged what's going to be with us for the entire year. Our lives, our health, our parnosa, everything, Rosh Hashanah. So when a Yid on Rosh Hashanah does tshuva meyira, in other words, he takes all of the, because he's scared what's going to be with him, he's hoping Hashem will be moichel him and then he'll have a beautiful year. It causes all of the bushel baskets of Averis that were done intentionally, intentionally, they go up a notch to the level of unintentional. That means all the Mazidim become, they go up. And when it comes Yom Kippur, it's Tshuva Meyava, it goes up another notch until it comes to the days of Sukkot, which are days of Simcha, and it transforms all the Averis into mitzvahs. Because Tshuva Meyava, Nasa Lo Kezochios, so says the Gemara. Now, we know that Moshe Rabbeinu, the psikta in Parshas Yisro says on the question, the Pasuk says the first one's name, his sons, Asher Shem Ho'arishon Gershon, Ki Amar Gerho Yisiberetz Nachriya, he was called his oldest son Gershon. The second, it says V'Shem Ho'echad Eliezer. So the Pesik to ask, what do you mean V'shem Ha'echad? The first one was Gershon. It should say now V'shem Hasheni, the second son. The first is Gershon, the second is Eliezer. But it doesn't say the second, it says the first. So the Pesik to ask this question and answered that Moshe Rabbeinu, he was begging Hashem, not to end with the Ksiva of Rosh Hashanah and the Chasima of Yom Kippur. Meaning you could have all the writing and that to affect the writing of what was written, we have Aser Smei Tshuva to change it from bad to good. And then there's a Chasima, it is sealed on Yom Kippur. But Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to take an extra day and that even though you wrote it on Rosh Hashanah and you sealed it on Yom Kippur, but you left the envelopes on the table, you never sent them away. And that's why we wish people a good kvittel, because it's at that point on the desk, so to speak, in Shemaim, it was not sent out. And the Arizal teaches that the Gemara says, and we know it from the Psukim, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu to prepare before Kabbalah Satora Hayom Umochar, today and tomorrow, two days. But Moshe Rabbeinu told the people to prepare for three days. 
And the Gemara says, Hoisif Yom Echad Midaito. He added on an extra day on his own. And most Hashem was happy that he did it, but he was never commanded to do it. He did it on his own. But that's the simple shot. Says the Arizal that he did that. But while he was doing that, the Hoisif Yom Echad, he added an extra day, referring to Hoshana Rabbah. Because it really should have been at the end of Yom Kippur, sealed and sent. And Moshe Rabbeinu asked that it's called Eliezer, that it should come out from me. I should have a Shaykhis. Because what's the Machloikis over there talking about? Whether a paraduma, how many black hairs does it have to have to become puzzle, to be invalidated? So Rabbi Eliezer held more, and one Mandyamer held two, if he has just two. And that's the parabashtayim, that the Rosh Hashanah and the Yom Kippur, that the Peresh Dinim, are effectuated by Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. But Moshe Rabbeinu wanted it not to stop because Yom Kippur is a day of crying and fasting. And he knew that as far reaching as fasting and crying is, that it shakes the whole heavens, but it's not as high as doing tshuva out of simcha. That simcha is even higher than the fasting and the crying. So he asked, Hoisif Yom Echad Midaito, he wanted an extra day of Hoshana Rabbah, that that's when they send away all the piskin, all the kvitlach, and it is the siyam on that day. Now, of course, Yaakov Avinu knew that for some miyat, it would go to Hanukkah, to the last day of Hanukkah, called Zos Hanukkah, Bezos Yechupar Avon Yaakov, 98% of Klaus will get their siyam and their chasim and everything on Hoshana Rabbah. But 2% are in a question, in a twilight zone, that there's, they aren't determined if they have good, to have bad, well, what's going to be with them? So it goes to Zos Hanukkah, and that's why you find in many Hasidish uh, shuls, that in Zos Hanukkah, just like Erev Yom Kippur, they give out lekach and they are wished, Gemar Chasim that the Rebbeim in Munkach and Bluzhev and Skolya all over, they give out cake, they give out lekach, and they wish the Tzibur one by one, a Gemar Chasim on Zos Hanukkah. And that was also a chilek from Yaakov Avinu, that he wanted to be attached to Hanukkah to effectuate the powerful generator that could be mashpia, the koyach hatov of a shefa rav to come down to Kla Yisrael for even those who are not ended on Hoshana Rabbah, but who are extended into the realm of Hanukkah, Zos Hanukkah, and that they should have a Gemar Chasim also, even though they're out so many weeks afterwards. Now, we, we know that the word sukkah is Begematria 91 which is the gematria of Yud K Vav K and the Shem Adna, Alev Dalad Nun Yud. Because when people eat and they know the Kavanas, while they're eating, they're thinking of the Tziruf that comes from Yud K Vav K and Adna. And in a sukkah, where a person that every Machshava, Deber, and Misa has such, that's why people should not be in a sukkah talking Lashon Hara, talking Shtusim, politics, stock market, all of this stuff in such a holy realm. If you're going into the Kodesh Kedoshim, when you see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu put a chilek of Eretz Yisrael 
into every sukkah so that Yitzchak, who was not allowed to go out of Eretz Yisrael, should be able to come in and be in Ushpizah. Do you see the level of the Kedusha that is, that is there? Now, there are some who are Mahadr, and they put their Lulav, Esrig, Hadassim, and Arabas together in the Sukkah, or at least they do the Nanuim. Now, Nanuim, without going into Arizal and many deep things about it, basically, that when you put out the, the lulav, you're being mavriach the chitzoinim. You are pushing away the bad, evil forces. But you bring back, when you bring back and shake, you're bringing back the hashpa, the tzinoiris of gewaltika, unbelievable shefa that HaKadosh Baruch Hu showers down to his people. And that's why there are 18 Nanuim, because we usually do three by each direction. There's six directions, north, east, south, and west, and up, north and south. So three times six, six directions, and three shakings is 18. And it says from Kadmonim, the Ferish, that the Koyach of Shemona Esrei, a whole year, is, is affected how much power our Shemona Esrei has by the 18 Nanuim that we do on Sukkot. That, that those Nanuim open up the treasure chest and make it possible by our Bakoshis in Shimon Hasrei 18 verses 18 to be able to bring out the power of the Nanuim and then the power in turn a whole year of our Shimon Hasreis. That's how far reaching the Nanuim are when we do it on Sukkot. And there is the hinder of doing it in a Sukkah because you're under the Shechina, the Shach is the Shechina, even Cholomoy, you can't put a decoration that fell back on the thing, it's Muksa, the whole Cholomoy, not just Yom Tov and Shabbos, you, have, you can't touch it over there, because that's the Shechina, and the whole job that we are interested in doing is to bring the Shechina back. Now the last day of Sukkot is really Hoshana Rabbah, Shmini Atzeris and Simchas Torah, and Simchas Torah is even a higher level. First, the Zohar Kodesh says that Shmini Atzeris is the Yichud Shalim. It's the biggest day of the year, even bigger than Yom Kippur. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Meyached with Yichud, with Klal Yisrael. It's like a Chosn and a Kala, and that brings out to fruition the greatest level of love that could be between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Klal Yisrael. Now, Simcha's Torah has its own dimension because Simcha's Torah, we have extra, it's not the same as Shemini says, even though in Eretz Yisrael it's one day. But there were many tzaddikim, Rav Zevin brings it, it's full in his uh, Sipur Chasidim, of tzaddikim gemurim who wanted and longed to move to Eretz Yisrael. And they refused to do it because they'd have to give up the second Seder on Pesach, and they'd have to give up uh, the Simchas Torah, because in Eretz Yisrael it's only Shmini Atzeris, one day, and it's all together. And Simchas Torah has a dimension in and of itself that you're not allowed to do on Shmini Atzeris, we give a lease. You can't, let's say, if you have a hundred people in shul, you want to give a lease. You're not allowed to start leaning over the sedra. Once you finish leaning, you can't make brachas just to give a lease. But on Simplest Torah, we can lane the sedra 50 times to make sure.
to make sure that every Yid gets an Aliyah and the Hanhaga of Simcha's Torah is like the Hanhaga it goes from Shmini Atzeris to, which is a time of Tchias HaMesim to the level of Simcha's Torah which is Olam Haba that the world reverts back to the Gan Eden of Adam Arishan Koidim Hachet that it goes higher and higher and higher and that's why the Hanhaga is all Chutz L'derech HaTeva there's no limit on this, no limit on that and it is a Simcha which carries with it not only the power of Simcha's Torah, but it permeates and seeps in to each and every Yid in its fullest level. But it's not Sukkot. In other words, the Gemara says, Mesav Yasvinim, we sit in the Sukkah on Shemini Yatzeres, but Uvruchi lo Barchina. Now, if it was just Sveika Dioma, why shouldn't we make a Bracha? Like we do on every Sveika Dioma, the same thing. But the answer is that Sukkot ends with the end of Hoshana Rabbah. And that's why we say Hoshana. No is spelled Nun Aleph, 51. And we ask that in the schus of the 51 days from Rosh Chodesh Elo, Tul Hoshana Rabbah, which is 51 days, Hoshana, save us in the schus of the No, of the Avoida of those 51 days that we have. But we go into a different realm. There's no Dover Gashmi that's a mitzvah. We don't have to eat certain things, this and that. I, I mean, we have to have Simchus Yom Tev and all that. But we don't have, like we have in Rosh Hashanah, we dip this, we take that apple, we take the apple, we take this. We, take, we don't have any of that on Shmini Atzeris, that it's a day in and of itself that we ask for the Geshem, which is Kenegad the Tal, the Tal Ora of Tchias HaMesim, and it's a tremendous day that we have to enwrap ourselves in the Indian of Simcha. Because that is the key. Many tzaddikim, when people used to come to them and say they have tzoros, trouble, parnasa, children, whatever their, par- their problems were, they were told, enwrap yourself in a complete frame of mind of simcha and force yourself to do it. And people say, well, if I'm in a bad mood, I can't just become simcha dick, it's not there. But if you say to the person, well, listen, if for the next five hours you'll be happy, I have a $10 million check for you. You will suddenly see the man who just said, if I'm in a bad mood, I cannot just push a button and be gone. Show him the $10 million check. And you're going to see how fast he's going to go from the moping and the depression into a frame of mind of simcha. Even if he thinks it's fake, it's not because he's really not in the good. But if he opens the door to simcha, he's swallowed in and he is drenched with the simcha that it brings from minute to minute and from inyan to inyan. So the Simcha really carries the day, and that's what Moshe Rabbeinu wanted. He wanted us to be enveloped in days of Suk- Yom Kippur to Sukkot, and then all seven days of Sukkot, and then you can send off the envelopes that were written on Rosh Hashanah and sealed Yom Kippur, and it's not until you actually mail the letter that it has any effect. If you write the most beautiful letter or negative letter, and you put it in an envelope and it's sitting on your desk, it has zero effect. But if you mail it and it gets to where it's supposed to go, then it can kick into the action or it can kick into what you need it for. But the point being that they are special, very, very holy days uh, that come in front of us. And when we say, we know, you know that the Goyim were allowed once a year to come to the base of Megdash and bring a Korban. There were 70 nations, and every nation was given a, a slot. Eight nations the first day of Sukkot, seven the second. And that's where Beis learns up that he holds Hanukkah. You don't start with one like we do, like Beis one, and then you light the next day two candles. Beis Shammai held that you start with eight candles the first night. 
and then you go down to seven the next night, and then to six, and then to five, because he learned from the Korbanos, the Poriachag, of the Goyim, that they started with eight nations, and the next night was seven, then the next. Now, and that's the reason that Sukkot is after Yom Kippur, because we want all those Averis that we threw Tashlech into the water on Rosh Hashanah and turned to Shoigeg, it's Mezid on Rosh Hashanah, then Shoigeg on Yom Kippur, and then we go into Sukkot and they become mitzvahs. So Rebarach mi Mezhebuz, the grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, his mother was Odol, and he was a brother to <coughs> Moshe Chaim Ephraim, the Degel Machne Ephraim, and his sister was Fega, who became the mother of Reb Nachman Breslava. But the Reb Nachman said that after all the Averis we threw on Rosh Hashanah Tashla into the water, now after Sukkot they became mitzvahs, we go back to the water, we pull out water to bake our matzahs because now the water that was filled with Averas are now shining glorified mitzvahs and we want it to be part of our mitzvah of Achilas matzah now the the Erev Sukkot is the art side of the Koznitz Maggid, but all the Sforim bring that it is the most propitious, the most outstanding day for Sadaka. Only Purim supersedes the, the dent that's made in heaven when someone gives Sadaka, and it's a thunderous dent, it's not a little quiet dent that the effect of giving tzedakah is unbelievable. And the Koshna Tzemagid said that the second most important day of the year that tzedakah has an unbelievable effect is Erev Sukkot. Now we know that the four days between Yom Kippur and Sukkot correspond to the Yudke Vavke, and as the Zohar Kodesh says, the last hey corresponds to all the mitzvahs, and the biggest mitzvah is tzedakah. As the Balatanya explains by Arichas, why tzedakah is the only item that could be mechaper for Averis that require days and days of fasting to get a kapara, but Tzedakah steps in. He says today people can fast uh, 200 days of the 365 days a year. They're not built that way. They're not, and, and he said this 240 years ago. So you can imagine today we're certainly not strong enough to be able to hold out and to be able to make that difference. So the point being that we are given a gift of Yom Kippur and then we're given a gift of being enclosed in the realm of Simcha of Sukkot, which is the biggest. You see that the Goyim came not on Pesach, they came on Sukkot. And the Gemara says that when Mashiach comes, the Goyim will all say that, oh, if you would have given us the Torah, we would have kept it just as well as the... So what is the test, the Gemara says? Hashem makes a gigantic sukkah. And he brings in all the Goyim, but he makes it hot. And there were many sukkahs that we had to sit in a sukkah, very, very uncomfortable, very hot. But the Yidden did it because of the love of the mitzvah, and comfort and discomfort never made the difference by a yid. We do the mitzvahs. And like the first night of Sukkot, a person has to make Yiddish and make hamotzi in a sukkah. And he waits till chatzos to see if the rain will stop. And if it doesn't, he has to, in the drenching rain, 
go out and make it. There's no the other nights he could eat nows, but not the first night of sukkahs, because the sukkah itself is so much beer, but it needs you need to ignite it, like you have to put the key in the treasure chest. You can't just look at the treasure chest. You have to activate it, and that's by the first night of sukkahs going in and being able to make at least Kiddush and Hamotzi in the sukkah. And there's no way out of that. And that's the reason that every Friday night we say, HaPore Sukkah Sholem Olein of Yalko Yisrael. Friday night, why do we say, talk about the sukkah, it's Shabbos, what does it have? We don't talk about Pesach and on Friday night, but in the bracha that the Zohar Kodesh says that is the third place that the third chalik of the neshama comes to the person. The first is by Mizmar Ladovit, when we all st- stand up and say, Havu Lashem. And then when we turn around by Bowie Vishalom, the second comes. And then the third comes by the, when we say those words, Hapore Sukha Shalom the three at night, and the three by morning come by when the words Yismach Moshe B'matnas Chalko, no, no, by Nishmas is the fourth, the fifth is Yismach Moshe, and then the sixth and the final is by the word Aye, Aye Mekom Kevodo in, in Kedusha, not Mekom Kevodo, but by the word Aye, and that's the reason that Rebbe's who know what they're doing, when they say aye and they're davening, they go aye and they keep singing with the word aye because they're going through the machshava of what they are supposed to be thinking at the time that they are Messiah, the sixth halakim of the neshama Yisera, uh on Shabbos. But we mentioned Sukkot because... It was the bringing, of the, the Yom Tov Sukkot is Yaakov Avinu, and Yaakov Avinu was always out to make peace. At the end of his story with Lovan, they departed in peace. With Esav, they departed in peace. He was angry at his sons Levi and Shimon because they went and killed out the city of Shechem, um, and, and because he wanted to settle it in a peaceful way. And he was angry to a point that when he gave them a bracha the day that he died, that he was nifter, he left them out. He said, don't bring my name in. He didn't give them a chalik in Eretz Yisrael. Shimon and Levi did not have a chalik in Eretz Yisrael because they went and did not do what Yaakov Avinu would not have wanted, would have wanted them to do to peacefully end, end the story. And by Yosef at Tzaddik, when he was mourning, I told you he was, that was connected the fourth Golos of, of Edo, that he came down to, to make peace with Paro and to bring peace, the Nile had dried up. There was a famine the day that Yaakov stepped foot into Mitzrayim. There was no more, they only had, there were supposed to be seven years, and seven years, there was only two years. When Yaakov Avinu's body was taken out of, Eretz, out of Mitzrayim to be buried, then the last five years of famine came. That's when it came. But not while he was there, the 17 years that he was there in Mitzrayim. So the point being that Yaakov Avinu always wanted and the biggest bracha comes when peace exists by Klal Yisrael. And that's why we end benching with the last bracha, Hashem Yevarech Esamo Shalom. We finish the last bracha in Shemon Eresay, Sim Shalom, or Shalom Rov, whatever you say, Hamavarech Esamo Yisrael Shalom. That we finish the davening, we finish the benching, all about Sholem, because that was the way of Yaakov Avinu to deal with issues that he confronted and to get them out of it. And he wanted that passed down to his children. So he was very angry 
with Shimon and Levi. And, and Yehuda had to give from his portion there to a little chunk to Shimon where they could live. And the Levian were dispersed throughout the country. They had a house here and a house there. They were all good. They didn't have their own real land. And this is all because they didn't do it in a peaceful manner of how to deal with the problem and with an issue. So we, every Shabbos, that we know that we have candles on the table because they used to have pitch black and that would bring to arguing of the husband. They'd bump into each other that says it. So we light candles that there should be light, there should be uh, a lit, a, a, a bright atmosphere so that no one could get angry for spilling or for uh, bumping into. That's all called Shalom. And that is the Yaakov went Sukosa and and he called it there was Shlemus when he came those 18 months and lived there in that city that there was Shlemus because of the Shalom that he represented and was and that's why Sukkis is the the item that carries the strongest dose of shalom to it. And that's why even on a regular Shabbos, we mention Sukkot. It's not Yom Tov Sukkot every Shabbos, but we mention it because of that Indian, that it's embodied in the Koyach of Sukkot of Yaakov Avinu, and that that should be mashpia on a whole week. And that's why we end off the bracha Friday night, Hapore Sukkot Shalom. Aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'imru amen. So I want to wish each and every one of you, you and your families, a beautiful, beautiful Yom Tov of Sukkot that we bring together all the Dalad Minim. If someone leaves the Esrig on the table and it's not put together with the other three, then it's a bracha levatala. We have to have Igud. And it was Yaakov Avinu who said to his sons, Hey, Osfu, gather together, and I will tell you, what's going to happen at the end of days. But the Hasidish Tzadikim used to teach that, Hey, Osfu, gather, a lotion of Igud, putting together, Aguda Echos, Putting together the Yidden who represent the Aravos, no Torah, no mitzvahs, or the Adasim, mitzvahs, but no Torah, or the Lulav, that's Torah, but no mitzvahs, and the Esrik that have both, all types of Yidden put together. Eisasher Yikra, how valuable. The word Yikra can mean happen, or it could mean valuable, like in Hallow we say, how valuable is your chesed, your kindness, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that he was saying to them, what's going to be so valuable at the end of days that before Mashiach, more than any time before, the achdus of Klal Yisrael will always be the priority and the decisive item that will make the difference by Klal Yisrael surviving the Golas or never falling down. The whole base of Mikdash was destroyed because of Sin Eschina, the second one. And Yaakov Avinu on his deathbed saw all of this. So he was trying by being Makasha to Hanukkah, by all of these things, being able to influence the load and lessen the load for Klal Yisrael as they went through all of the Golosim. A Freilichen and a Listikin Yomtiv to each and every one and that the Simcha and the Koyach of Simcha can transform an unbelievable metamorphosis in our lives and our daily happenings and upgrade 
the goodness to greatness. Good yomtev.